O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. In the beginning was the Word of God, and the Word became flesh to live among us. Blessed is the Lord our God, and blessed is Jesus Christ our Savior. The Lord be with you. And all of you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O Lord our God, we give you thanks for the wonder and love you offer us through the gift of our baptism. Your word made flesh among us, good news of great joy for all. By the power of your Holy Spirit, poured out upon us in baptism. Let us renew from above so that we may give glory to you and the lives of your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. sing, and heaven and nature sing, and earth and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations Lord God, we sing to you a new song, for your victory is ever new. In the resurrection of Christ, you gave us a glimpse of our future, 
and in your victory over death, you have shown us how we shall overcome the last enemy. As the seas roar and the hills sing together, we too will praise you for your great triumph. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and rise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child, and those in labor together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading today is a letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you, also when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, 
were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Reading from the Gospel according to John, hear what the Spirit says to the church. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What, what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law, indeed, was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. I'm sure most of you know, but I didn't know until I went to seminary, there are two different versions of the Christmas story in the Bible. The depictions and enactments of the cosmic event that we see in nativity scenes, on Christmas cards, Christmas pageants, Christmas movies, Christmas TV specials, are basically a mashup of two quite different narratives found in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. For example, in Luke, there is no mention of, a vi of the visit from the Magi. They are only in Matthew. And Matthew doesn't mention the angelic host appearing to shepherds who then visit the baby in the manger. In fact, no baby in the manger in Matthew, period. Even though the Magi, who are only in Matthew, show up in every depiction of the nativity with their lavish gifts and that in that lowly place. This is all okay because the four Gospels emphasize different but not conflicting aspects of the Christian understanding about who Jesus is and the nature of his earthly ministry. In the first few centuries, there was a lot of debate among Christians about the nature of Jesus. The debate was not really about whether he was the divine Son of God, but when that divinity came into being. Was it at the time of or before the birth? as we might surmise from Matthew and Luke, 
Or did he become divine sometime later, say at his baptism when the dove appeared and the voice of God proclaimed him as God's beloved son? For the writer of John, there is no doubt. Jesus, the human being who lived and walked among us, is eternal, the eternal word of God. Emphasis on eternal. No beginning and no end. This introduction to the Gospel of John is a powerful statement of the core Christian belief that Jesus Christ was and is fully God and fully human. What is most important to John is not the circumstances of Jesus' birth. It is the eternal word of God became human, forever changing God's relationship with humanity and humanity's relationship with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. I know it sounds kind of convoluted, maybe even obtuse, especially these first five verses. The whole passage would probably get a D- minus if it were to be graded by an English professor, and so would this sermon, I realize. But it is complicated. It's impossible to put into human language. Even though the Gospel of John is in essence, tells a story about the life of Jesus. His purpose was not to write a narrative history or a biography. None of the Gospels have that as their main purpose, but least of all John's. In John's Gospel, the story of Jesus ultimately is not a story about Jesus. The story is, in fact, the story of Jesus is, in fact, the story of God. And the story of God in relationship to humanity is about God's unconditional, eternal love and promise of salvation for all people. In the dark days of 2020, we heard many heartbreaking stories from and about people affected by the pandemic. One that I heard on NPR early on in the days of COVID has stuck with me as a perfect illustration of God's unconditional love in Christ. A beloved matriarch in her 80s had been vibrant and active until she caught the virus and had to be hospitalized the day her symptoms began. She was given an iPad that she didn't know how to use, but her medical caregivers were able to help her so that she could visit with her family via Zoom and FaceTime. The day before she died, she told them not to worry. She was okay. She had seen a light coming toward her in her sleep, and she knew it was Jesus coming for her soon, and she was ready to go with him. Her daughter told the NPR correspondent about how difficult it had been to watch her mother in her last days of life without the ability to be physically with her, to hold her hand and to kiss her forehead. But while the daughter and the rest of the family were not people of faith, 
She said there was something coming to them from that hospital room across the cyberspace that gave them all a sense of comfort and peace that they really couldn't understand, but they were very grateful for it. Jesus is the light in the darkness of a pandemic. He is a light, the light that shines through the darkness to struggling family, family members physically separated from dying loved ones. He is the light shining through overburdened, anxious, but devoted health care workers. He is the light that shines through a beloved matriarch talking to her family, comforting them as she is dying. He is the light that comforts even those with little or no faith. The darkness make, might make the light a little dim, but it will not overcome it. Before we knew anything of it, before God spoke and set the cosmos in motion by his word, God chose humankind to be his adopted children. There is no greater love than this, and there is no greater comfort than the knowledge with that when it seems the world is shrouded in darkness, the Word became flesh, lived among us, and is the light for us still. Always there, the light in the darkness, eternally emanating from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. Freely we have received, freely let us give.
Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Mighty and merciful God, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord, who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the mission and ministry of the church, every service that proclaims your love, the people and relationships that sustain us, our calling to daily discipleship, signs of new life and hope. Merciful God, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about the peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for the church of Jesus Christ in every land, the stewardship and healing of creation. Friends and family members, neighbors in special need, all who serve your mission in the world. All powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into the world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Teach us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us arise and shine, for our light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Amen. Go in peace and spread great joy. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.